Greetings, ladies and gentlemen of the Vince, Rock and Spock Connection. And I just streamed the, the movie Death House. So, let's do a little review on that, shall we? So, it's about, the movie's about a pair of federal agents battling their way through a prison riot in a high tech maximum security prison and also beginning to question their own sense of reality. It was. But uh, anyway, so cast of note, you've got Courtney Palm as Agent Toria Boone. Um, she thought he was two federal agents. Cody Long as Agent Jay Novak, the other of, of the two. Um, where the cast really shines is its plethora of horror royalty. Uh, you've got Dee Wallace and Barbara Crampton as the two uh, uh, scientists behind... Um, the uh, concept of the prison, Doctors Fletcher and Redman, respectively. Um, uh, so amongst the prisoners, you got Bill, you have Bill Mosley, um, Michael Berryman, <laughs> Kane Hodder, Vern G. Wells, um, various others, and yeah, they're. They're quite cool. Uh, so this is more of an off-the-cuff type of review, so that I've been doing it for that I've done in a while. I, I did make some notes, but yeah. Um, so like I said, yet movie begins. We get some backstory on uh, Agent on Agent Boone, and then uh, we see her arrive at the prison, and we also. See Novak arrive. Um, they go through various VR. Uh, they go through a, a virtual tour, or part of a virtual tour of the prison. They talk to the two doctors, um, going over the various methodology of how everyone's kept there. Um, and also, the, the virtual tour itself also goes over certain things like the various levels of the prison, uh, which is kind of sort of inspired by Dante, uh, Dante's Inferno. Um, but, of course, when they're on an actual tour of the facility, everything goes wrong, the prisoners get loose and kill everyone, and... So uh, they've got to fight their way through, and they let's just say they just, they see a few things that they will probably never forget, and kind of make you question just you know who the real monsters are. So anyway, uh, some ups and ups and downs. Um, there's a couple of big ups. First off, tons of horror references, cameos, and casting. I mean these are. There are actors you will recognize right off, like, oh, there's, you know, that guy, you know. Um, and I named off a few already. Bill Mosley from Texas Chainsaw Master 2, as well as Devil's Rejects and uh, um, House of a Thousand Corpses and the upcoming Three from Hell. Uh, Barbara Crampton from Reanimator and From Beyond. Um... Kane Hodder, friggin' Jason, for a few movies. Um, D. Wallace from The Howling, as well as E.T. Gunnar Hansen from uh, Texas Chain, the original Leatherface. There's also a very amusing reference to Texas Chainsaw Massacre within the film. Um, which actually relates to where he appears in it, too. It's, yeah, it, it, it's rather, it is kind of an amusing thing. But anyway. Um, honestly, I thought the plot was, you know, pretty decent. Um, and kind of fairly well executed. Well executed. Um, the... <sighs> 
Well, I guess now it's time to get to the downs, really. So, big one. The two leads, Courtney Palm and Cody Longo, are totally overshadowed by the various uh, well-known horror actors that they, that they play off of. Or hell, the, the experienced actors they play off of in general. The, yeah, it's just like... It's like, no, no, no. Oh, you're the lead? That's nice. This is my scene. Thank you. Uh, on me? Yeah. And he's like, okay. Um, but yeah, it... Throughout the... Every time they're with, you know, an actor of that magnitude, you know, it's just like... You hardly kind of, you barely realize that you know they're there. Um, almost within the first I don't know twenty minutes or so, also kind of a de goodly portion of the ending kind of gets telegraphed right then and there. Um, there's a point with Agent Novak where so okay, both characters, both agents get a honors request upon being accepted into the, you know, being, you know, brought in to, to work at the prison. Um, they actually said the whole, what the whole deal was with uh, Agent Boone, but with Agent Novak, it's not really explained what his, what it, his, what, what, his whole thing is about. Um, and it felt like... It, it's the kind of thing where it felt... The scene kind of made you think this is going to be important. And then, oh, there, it, okay. It seemed, like it seemed to have no bearing whatsoever. Um, amongst the prisoners... This is, this is really hardly... This really didn't detract from the movie. I just... There was a very obvious Harley Quinn ripoff amongst the prisoners, and any group shot with the with the main group of prisoners of riding prisoners always made a point to show her, and always have her, and she'd always laugh about she'd be laughing. And it's not that it's so much that it was just kind of a, oh hey Harley Quinn's right there. And I was kind of a, hmm really guys, and you know to be perfectly honest. If this was, movie was made had been made ten years earlier, it would have been a Joker. It would have been someone basically doing a Joker. Hair might basically you know clown makeup, red you know grease paint, and red you know hastily applied red lipstick along here, and if you know you might have a glimpse at one point to say oh, maybe he's got green hair. And then this is now this is a big one. This is all like almost as big as, this is as big, if not bigger than uh, my problem with the lead, with how the leads um, did. About two thirds or so of the way through, um, the visual effects and whatnot take a severe nosedive. Um, I would almost guess what happened is the effects crew was basically told, hey, um, there's only this much, this is how much we had to spend on the effects now. Oh, so yeah, that's, that's your budget. And, you know, maybe they already had, they already had some good stuff done. So, okay, you know, but they said, well, we need this much to do this. Well, yeah, this is what you got. Oh, and it shows. Um, a lot of just, you know, some, I don't know, some uh, poor lighting choices, you know, the kind of stuff that can be fixed in post easily, but, yeah. Um, overall opinion, it's a solid B-grade horror movie that more than likely will definitely, more than likely definitely appeal to fans of the genre more than anyone else. Uh, hell, Bill Mosey and Kane Hodder being in the cast pretty much sold me. 
Um, it's worth a watch, you know, by a streaming service or a Redbox rental or however one might watch it. Uh, you know, so, yeah. It's relatively speaking short. Not even an hour and a half long. Um, as for a rating, I, I'm going to be... I'll be generous and give it a three out of five. Eh, you know what? That, no, I'm not being generous with three out of five. That, that it's a three. Yeah, it's about on average. It's you know, it's on average. So yeah, three out of five. Anyway, that is it for now. Um, yeah, surprise video. Uh, we'll uh, once again we'll be doing the uh, comic book review starting later on today. As always. Just, Feel free to like, share, and subscribe. Hit the bell icon to be notified when I put new content. This is Rock and Roll Spock signing off. Or, oh, links to my Facebook, Twitter, and uh, Patreon in the description box down below. This is Rock and Roll Spock signing off saying, Live long and rock hard. <laughs>